get my six. What's up, everybody? There's a leaf falling. Welcome back to the most amazing homesteading channel on the internet that has nothing to do with homesteading and another story for a beautiful October night, though it's still not quite night yet. I'm taking a few evenings here in a row uh, because that veil's getting thinner, you know, the closer we get to Halloween and had some close calls here, something chasing me out of the woods a few nights back. So getting out a little bit earlier until I get my nerve back. I know it's supposed to be about the spooky, scary stuff. I should come out later anyway. Well, we'll get there. So, uh, for, for today's reading, this evening's reading, we're going to go back to one of the True Hauntings volumes. This is True Hauntings Volume 2. Personal stories of real experiences with the paranormal, supernatural, cryptids, aliens, and UFOs. This story is coming from one of our viewers, Christine M. She didn't want to give her last name. Um, excuse me. If you have a creepy story, an experience you've had with something you believe to be supernatural, paranormal, Saw a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Dogman, whatever. And if you would like to share that story with our viewers, with our readers, send it to the channel with your permission to share it. The email address is crazylakeatmail.com. Crazylakeatmail.com. We've had quite a few stories rolling in for the month of October, so we're already putting together volume five of this series. Your story can be in there as long as you send it in time. Now... With no further ado, as my beautiful bride dearly, a.k.a. Giggly Girl, would say, let's get to the story. So Christine M., who is from somewhere in Appalachia, Stan, sends us a story called Buyer Beware. There's the crows. You know, in times past, we'd be making these videos and some crows would come calling and then we'd start seeing some really weird stuff in the background. So you make sure to continue to get my six couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, maybe a week or so ago, a lot of people saw st something running through the background there. It's 2 minute and 15 mark, so it might come back. All right, buyer beware. Hi, Mr. Lake. I've been watching your channel for almost a year now. I came for the gardening tips, but I've stayed for the entertainment. I love to read the comment section because it makes me feel not quite so alone. Not that I'm lonely, because I'm not. I have a family and friends, but where I sometimes feel alone is in regard to some of the strange experiences I've had. I'm so happy to see other people sharing their experiences in your comments section because it lets me know that I'm not crazy, nor are my parents, who have both been dead for many years now. Thought I heard footsteps, so keep getting my six. You see, like yourself, I grew up in a small town in Appalachistan. I love that word, by the way, and I'm so grateful that you invented it. I laugh when I see people in the comments section asking where it is, especially when they're from there. Obviously, that one goes over their heads, but it's not gone over mine, and just as you have to appreciate your unique culture, or our unique culture, you have to appreciate someone who can so eloquent, eloquently rename the entire region fittingly. I am one of the few who totally get you. Thank you, Christine M., my fellow Appalachistanian. Anyway, like you, I digress. Maybe it's an Appalachian-American thing. So, when I was a kid, one of my parents' friends, actually two of them, a married couple, opened up a flea market-type business in our small Appalachian town. I can't call it an antique shop. As you know, most of those places are either farther south or farther north. Most of what we have to resell in Appalachistan is just junk, and we don't try to sugarcoat it by slapping a sign up that reads Antique Shop, which would mean little more than a license to overcharge for junk anyway. Isn't that so true? That was so beautifully put, Christine M. Nope, flea market works just fine around these here parts. My parents, like most people in town, wanted to support this couple, so they took us, I had three siblings, to the open house. I was about 10 years old at the time, and I've never been one to be into impulsive buying or consumerism at all, but I can clearly remember that even as a kid at 10 years old, a time in life during which it's almost natural to want to buy something at a store, especially when you've been told by your parents, who usually won't let you get anything, that you can actually get something, that I did not see a single thing in that store that I wanted. Sure, they had lots of stuff, but basically that's all it was, stuff. My mother ended up buying a pair of couch pillows that had deer on them just because it was about the only thing she could find that she could imagine a use for. She really wanted to help her friends. 
The pillows had one deer each on them. One pillow had a buck and the other one had a doe. I distinctly remember this because we all made some sort of comment about how we had to buy both pillows because we didn't want to break up a marriage or something cheesy like that. Anyway, we took the pillows home and we put them on our couch. The deer were stitched into the pillows in such a way that if you lay one on the left end of the couch and the other on the right end of the couch, the deer would be facing each other. That's exactly how we set them up. It wasn't long after that we went to bed because it was a school night. The next morning after me and my sibs had gotten ready for school and just before we went out to catch the bus, I looked at the couch to view our new pillows and I saw that the deer were facing away from each other. That's odd, my mother said when I pointed this out to her. Your father must have moved them this morning before he went to work. She then switched the pillows so that they would be facing each other again. I made a mental note because my gut was giving me an odd feeling. I noted that the buck was on the left and the doe was on the right. To say I thought about the pillows that day in school would be a lie because I, di I didn't think, I don't think I did, mind you, this is going back 50 years now. But I know that when I was walking from the bus stop to our house, I was thinking about them because I was having that same gut feeling again. As soon as I walked in the door, I looked at the pillows and I'd be gosh darned if they hadn't reversed themselves again. The doe was now on the right and the buck was on the left. I pointed this out to my mother and she said that she'd taken a nap on the couch that day while we'd been in school and that she'd accidentally knocked the pillows onto the floor and she must have simply put them back in the opposite places. Okay, I thought, acceptable, but I continued to keep my eyes on these pillows. As fate would have it, only a few days after my family came into possession of these pillows by way of our mercy purchase, I got chicken pox. Yes, I'm aging myself, as obviously there's a vaccine for, the, for that these days. And it's odd, I don't remember anyone calling it the mark of the beast when it came out. And I was stuck at home for one week. My mom was a stay-at-home mom, so I wasn't alone. But what I'll say is that for the week I was home, I made those pillows my project. I would sit and stare at them, daring them to move in my mind. I never saw them move, however, every time I drift off to sleep. When I would wake up, they would be rearranged. I hear something back here. You are driving yourself crazy with those pillows, my mom would tell me when I'd mention this to her. So finally, I stopped mentioning it to her, but I continued watching. Things took a huge turn in my favor, at least as far as my mother believing me went. On the Friday of that week, I was home with chicken pox. The strangest of strange events thus far would lead to us finally getting to the end of our mystery with these pillows. My mother had fed me lunch and then she had gone upstairs to take a nap in her bedroom. Try as I might to stay awake, staring at the pillows with what seemed like see-through wall strength, wanting to see them move when they did, I finally fell asleep myself. When I woke up, my mother was standing between me and the couch. I'd fallen asleep on the love seat. She was staring at the pillows. I could see one, the doe, but not the other because my mother was blocking it from view. Before I could see it, she picked it up and ran into the kitchen with him. When she came back into the living room, she was carrying the pillow in a black trash bag and she quickly picked up the other pillow and put it in the black trash bag as well. Come on, she said, urging me to get up off the love seat. We're getting rid of these pillows. What, I said? Come on, Christine, she said. You can stay in the car while I take these back. Okay, so my mother was not trying to actually get a refund on her one or two of her one or two dollars she paid for the pillows. She had decided to take them back to the junk shop where we'd bought them, and she was going to simply give them back for free so that her friends could possibly sell them to someone else and make money off of them again. She explained this to me in the car as we went to the store. She told me that she was tired of me being obsessed for no reason, as she put it, with these pillows. Again, I was about 10 years old at the time, and I bought every word she told me, hook, line, and sinker. I've learned to watch when you get a plane going overhead and a big old dump truck way down there on the road going by all that artificial noise they love to move because they know you can't hear them
When we got to the junk shop, there was literally a line at the door. However, this line was not made up of shoppers. It was made up of returners, for the lack of a word that doesn't exist. It seemed as if almost everyone who'd bought something at this shop was returning it. My mother was away from me for about 15 minutes. When she finally came back, she got in the car, shut the door, stared straight ahead through the windshield for a considerable period of time before speaking. And when she did speak, she looked me directly in the eyes and said, we are never going into that store again. Later that night, while I was struggling to get to sleep, as all the naps I'd taken that week due to illness had totally upset my sleep schedule, I overheard mom telling dad about what she'd found out at the store and the true reason she finally decided to take those pillows back. As it turns out, when my mother woke up from her nap that day and she went downstairs, she saw that I was sleeping. She turned to look at my fixation, the pillows, and she saw that the buck was gone. Both pillows now had a doe on them, and this is when my mother realized I'd been right the whole time. Something was seriously wrong with those pillows, and as she told my father, she thought they were either haunted or possessed or both. But it gets worse. When she took them back to give them back to the shop owners, all of the other people that were there were doing the same with their items for the exact same reason. Every item they'd purchased seemed to be either haunted or possessed. My mother said someone was returning a doll that was supposed to wet its diaper when you poured water into its mouth, and the person who'd bought it said it actually urinated real urine, whether you put water in its mouth or not. There was an artificial bird in a cage that would you would wind up and it would sing that kept crapping real bird poop all over its cage. Supposedly, there was even an alarm clock that would announce what time of day or night the person who owned it was going to die. For example, at any given time of day or night, it would just start blurting out, you will die at 2.15 a.m. You will die at 2.15 a.m. My father believed every word my mother told him, just as I believed every word I overheard, and my parents agreed that they would never step foot in that shop again, despite the fact that they'd been lifelong friends with the owners. It didn't matter, however, because the following week, the shop went out of business. I guess word had gotten around, and that word was not good. Oh, I guess I should have mentioned this in the beginning, but before the shop had been a flea market, it had been our small Appalachian American community's morgue and funeral parlor for more than a century. Mr. Lake, thank you for giving those of us who have, who have odd stories such as this one a place to air them without fear of ridicule and harassment. I'm going to share your YouTube channel with my friends and family because I know of several of them that could send you some really good stories. Give my best to your beautiful family and I impatiently await your next video. And by the way, I give you permission to use this story however you see fit. Just please only use my first name and last initial. Christine M. Somewhere in deep, dark Appalachistan. Christine M., thank you so much for your story. Again, if you have a story of anything creepy or weird or out of the norm that you believe is paranormal, supernatural, cryptid-related, UFOs or aliens, send them to us here at the channel, along with your permission to share them, and we will. The email address is crazylake at mail.com, and I will see you for more spooky October stories next time.